I'm going to ask the uncle to sit. Yes, and then she can get a treat as well. Done this probably. Pardon? Have you done? You've already done this though. Yeah, because I have three dogs. Yeah, but not everyone who has three dogs does. No. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're sitting still, down. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, for for dogs that are really excitable about, oh, they can't wait till you get over there to give them the treat. If the treat always comes from the ground, um, so I'm not going to give the dog the treat like this. The treat's always going to go come from down here. They're going to be looking for down there, or maybe you're going to drop it so the treat drops down there. Yes. Um, and then you can get a dog that's where's it, where's it going to come rather than, oh my god, I got it. With this, it's a, I haven't given a cue, so I'm just reinforcing, like, if I'm working with this dog, you lay down. If you get up, <laughs> I'm probably going to ask you to lay down somewhere else. So the best thing you could do when I'm working with this dog is lay down. The problem with that is if you wanted to do two tricks, the dog tricks with two dogs, um, if you don't reinforce one of the dogs enough, they're going to start laying down thinking, hmm, laying down won't work because you're ignoring me, you're not giving me food. So um, just to, to counteract that, you could just keep giving your dog eye contact, the one that, that you're working with that you think is going to settle. But settling is much better than other things that they could be doing when you're working with two, which is like running away doing their own thing. Awesome. Another great thing is every time you give your dog a treat for something, what's in there? <laughs> every time you give your dog a treat for something, you can touch them just before they get the treat. So you can use your um, classical conditioning in the training session um, and you click, your dog does something, click, pet, and then treat. And the same with their dinner, you know, for clients, if they have a very hand-shy dog, you're going to pet them, feed the kibble, pet them, feed the kibble. And then when, they, when they're getting into it, you can start waiting for calmer, calmer behavior. It's really easy for, for to, if you have a dog that's over aroused by food, it's really easy to build it back up. So you don't have to worry like, ooh, I don't want my dog to lose his excitement over food because then he won't do his tricks as well or he won't do as many. It's easy to get it back um, just by moving the food quickly or exciting the dog. That's another great exercise for subtle. Is your dog subtle and the dog another dog walks towards yours and then another dog runs towards yours? I mean, obviously you're not going to let a loose dog run at your dog while they're settling, but. That's another proofing behavior. Okay. And then you can take your dog to an agility trial and they settle. Splash. For the first time I took Splash to an agility trial, she screamed because she saw little dogs running. And for some reason, she really liked it. And it was scary. So how I worked through Splash being scared, like overly excited about little dogs running was settle. So she'd settle, look at the little dogs, get a little massage, go back a little bit, go closer. Started, you know, 50 feet away, whatever they call it. What, is, what do you call them? They're not meters. Meters. <laughs> 50 meters away, cool. and then gradually got closer, further away. <laughs> so we could settle and we could watch the little dogs running around, and she didn't care. So the settle can really help with behavior modification because it's like you built this calmness and then you put it into the environment that, that you wanted it in. It's one that is really mellow and then you can get them excited when you want to. Hey. Hey. Hey.